Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Terry McHugh! Thank you, thank you very much, because there's nothing like coming on stage to the sound of your own footsteps. Uh, but sure, we'll give this a go. Uh, it's lovely to be here, uh, because like, let's be honest, I probably shouldn't be here at all. Uh, you see, in October 2017, uh, I, I you might call it a near-death experience, I had a TIA, a transient ischemic attack. Uh, now that's a scientific term, the, the layman term is mini-stroke. Right. And, and I think they call it a mini stroke because they wanted to make it sound all nice and lovely and, you know, fluffy, but it's not. They're fucking horrible. Oof, right. right. Uh, and people have asked me, you know, what were you doing when, when you had this thing, you know, and, and basically what happened was I had said to Mrs. McHugh that we were going to sit down and write every single penny that went out of our house in a month. And we did that. And I got up and went into the living room and had a fucking stroke. All right. Uh, and, you know, and people have said, what does it feel like? You know, and basically what happens is you sort of lose sort of the feeling down one side and you're not sure who you are, where you are, and you're confused. And it's very, very frightening. And, and the symptoms last for about 10, 15 minutes and, and then they pass. Uh, you know, and, and I mean, you can have one without even realizing you're having it. And uh, my symptoms passed after sort of 15 minutes. Got my feeling back. You knew where I was, what I was doing. And I had a choice. I thought, right, I can either go to the hospital or go to bed. So I decided to go to bed, because I thought to myself, if I'm dying tonight, uh, I'm, my last thought is going to be, aren't electric blankets lovely? Not, I've been sitting waiting in a &E for four hours, fuck Brexit. Clearly got a bunch of Leave voters in the night. This boy looks like he loves Brexit. Uh, this guy's laughing, he's fucking loving it, never's wrong with you. Right, so, so anyway, so, you know, went to bed up the next morning and I thought, right, another choice to make. Do I go to hospital or do I go to work? And I went to work because I'm a trooper. All right, then. Uh, so went to work. After a week or so, I started to notice strange things happening. And like, like for example, uh, signature changed. Couldn't do my same signature. I sat for hours trying to get my signature back. Still do it occasionally, and I just can't get it. I can't get it right, and it annoys me because there's people who have strokes and they wake up like speaking fluent French. I mean, granted that, that tends to happen more often in France. I don't care what you say, that's gold. Nothing. All right, carry on, fuck it. And, you know, and then the other thing that happened was I couldn't count money. Uh, I was in work one day, counting the money, it was 10, 20, 30. And then I couldn't get past 30. I knew that 40 came next, but I just couldn't find it in my head. It just wasn't there, you know. I can't count money past 30 quid. And, and that's made me a promoter's dream. Uh, you know, it's like, what's McHugh due? Oh, he's due 200 quid. I could just give him 40, so the prick can't count past 30 anyway. I'll never know. Seriously, not counting, can't count money, no, 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 <laughs> alright. Anaheim, nope. Nope, alright then. Uh, so, so I thought, right, these weird things were happening, so I thought, I better actually go to a hospital. So I went to the hospital a couple weeks later, and they thought, right, you should have came here at the time. And I was like, all right, fair enough. And, uh, you know, so I went to the hospital, they'd done a scan of my brain and stuff, and they went, no, oh, there's a wee bit of, you know, permanent brain damage there. They says, you know what, what you've had, that's not small enough to call it a mini stroke but it's not big enough to call it a major stroke uh, i can basically say that i've had a fair to midland stroke i wish i could say i was having a fair to midland gig but there you go uh so you know came out of the hospital worked on kept working kept gigging kept doing my thing uh went on tour with jake o'kane the end of that tour, I was sort of, was Grand Opera House in Belfast, gig had finished, that was the end of the tour. I was sitting on the edge of the stage, a uh, big stupid smile on my face, and uh, Jake came over and sat beside me, and he says, Terry, he says, you're just sitting there smelling the roses, aren't you? And I sort of looked at him and went, to be honest with you, Jake, I'm just glad I'm not smelling burnt toast. It's like anything, you know, you, you know. You, yeah. What the fuck, like? 
Uh, we're nearly done, all right. So after that, what happened was I went out that night, went out with my best mate that night, and we had a handful of beers, and I was sitting and talking, and, and we agreed, you know, you're better, you've got better at work, you've got better on stage, you know, you're, you're healthy again, this is brilliant, you know, and, and that's that scary, horrible chapter of your life, you can close it down and carry on. And as I say, that was March, and then April came, and uh, I was walking across the living room, and next thing I knew, I was on the floor going, ah, shit, not this again. And Mrs. McHugh, she came running in and she looked down at me and she goes, Terry, I think you're having another stroke. And I looked back up at her and went, no, I'm not. Then she says, let's do the adverts. We'll do the adverts. The adverts? And she goes, F, what does F stand for? And I was like, fuck, I'm having a stroke. And she went, no, it stands for face. Well, I've got a face. That's not good. And then she goes, A, what does A stand for? And I was like, ah, fuck, I'm having a stroke. She was like, no, it stands for arms. I was like, jeez, I've got them too. What am I going to do here now? And then she goes, S, what does S stand for? And then she went, smile. And I'm smile as if I've got nothing to smile about. I'm having a stroke. And then she goes, T, what does T stand for? And I looked up at her and I was like, T, what does T stand for? What does T stand for? And she was like, T. T. What does T stand for? What does, what, what does T stand for? 25 minutes later, we realized that T stood for something I was fast running out of. Time, right? So she went and rang an ambulance. Ambulance comes back at that. Off we go to the hospital. People poking and prodding and sticking things on me. I was in the hospital overnight. Next morning, two doctors come into the room. How do you know they were doctors? They were wearing beige cords and a blue shirt. Standard doctor uniform. And they said, we're to do some tests on you. I says, right, you do your tests. I'll pass them and then I'll go home. And he says, right, first test. Stand up, stood up. He says, put your hands out in front of you. Close your eyes and wiggle your fingers. So I'm standing like this thinking, you know what? I'm going to open my eyes and these two will be gone. We opened my eyes, they were still there. I was like, brilliant, you're still here. Class, right. And then this is next test. Same again, arms out in front of you. Put your hands like this this time. Close your eyes and wiggle your fingers. Now at this point, I'm standing there thinking, if these two boys take a step forward, this is going to get awkward very, very quickly. Open my eyes, they were still there. I thought, happy days, you're still here. Good, right. This is last test, Terry. He says, I'm going to give you some instructions. You carry out the instructions and then we'll do it again, but with no instructions from me. I went, no bother, we'll do that. And then I'll go home. And he says, right, so I need you to stand there. He says, no bother standing here. He says, tilt your head and lift your shoulder. So I went like that. He says, do it again. And I went like that. He went, do it again. I went like that. He says, now take a step to your left and raise your arms. So I went like this, raise my arms. And he goes back in the middle, he's back in, he says, raise your arms, went like that. He says, take a step to your right, okay, raise your arms, done that. He goes back in the middle, right, raise your arms, done that. He says, now lift your shoulder, tilt your head, went like that, went like that. He says, right, I need you to do that on your own, no instruction from me. And I went, right, will you see this big man, I'm going to do this, and you're going to send me home. So I stood there, and I went. And that is when I realised that they were not two doctors from Ward 2. Oh no, they were two doctors who'd been on their lunch and went here. Do you want to go up to Ward 2 and see what we can get the stroke victims to do? Because them two bastards had me doing the thriller dance. Money changed hands when they left that room. Gonna be honest with you, that normally gets a round of applause. Uh, this guy's no arms, so he's an excuse. Don't know what's wrong with the rest of you, but I'll tell you what, when people watch this at home, they'll be wetting themselves. So uh, that's that. That was my near death experience. This has been an actual death experience. Thank you very much. Uh, Ivan Terry McHugh, you've been. I don't really know what you've been. Uh, Good night. Ah, oh, fuck this. Thank <laughs> you.